Hi, hello, my name is Julia and this is my YouTube channel where I talk about art books and museums. If this is something you want more in your life, maybe you can consider subscribing. I want to talk about books that I read in June very briefly. Very briefly because it's so hot here in this little room. I closed the doors and yeah, unfortunately my window is still open because I need to breathe at least something, so please forgive me for that. If you watched my June TBI, you know that I wasn't particularly in the mood of reading. It was kind of difficult for me to find out what I want to read. Um, uh, maybe I was a bit lost, I don't know. I completed four books and uh, some of them uh, were quite fascinating, I have to admit. Uh, so disregard all that I was talking about in my TBR, some of the books are just uh, like didn't work for me. And the first one that didn't work for me, I basically DNF that, it's Stephen King's Misery. So as you can see, I've only read four pages, <laughs> literally four pages. And I think I just, um, I don't know, I wasn't interested in that. And what turned me off completely was actually this quote uh, by Friedrich Nietzsche right in the beginning of this book. When you look into the abyss, the abyss also looks into you. Look, I understand that this book was written in like, what, 80s? And maybe at that time um, everybody forgot who Nietzsche was and uh, um, that quote was kind of like a discovery uh, by Stephen King, maybe, I don't know. Um, but reading it in the 21st century or let's say seeing a book with an opening quote by Nietzsche of his one of the most famous quotations, which I find actually quite ridiculous, it's just a little bit cringe for me, I have to admit that. So I think because this quote, albeit is very you know famous and uh, can suit to many different situations. Um, I don't know the structure of the sentence. Uh, it begs to be idiom. I don't know. It begs to be a famous phrase that you would use in defense situations, but. I don't know, that doesn't work. It's just cringe. I couldn't continue after that, after that phrase, after that sentence. I I just couldn't, I don't know, I don't know. I'm being chaotic maybe, but uh, that's just my thing. I don't know if I ever go back to Stephen King. As uh, you maybe know, I've never read him. I've only seen movies based on his books, but this one, it's a turn off for me. I don't know why I can't read him. It's just, it's f I'm falling asleep when I start reading it. Anyways, uh, that's with Stephen King. Another fail that occurred in my reading months of June was, of course, <laughs> Invest in its Noise by Erich Maria Remark. So the problem with this novel is that it's wonderful. I actually enjoy it. I finished about a third of it. Uh, I, w I want to continue, I'm going to continue that. The problem is just my knowledge of German is not enough. So I already have like three pages of uh, like vocabulary that I don't understand or don't know. These words are often related to the military vocabulary, which is fine, I understand. I never learned military vocabulary uh, in German, so that makes it a bit difficult to read. So what I do is that I'm listening to the audiobook uh, first. Like I have to admit, when I listen to the book uh, and read it, I don't know, I don't understand a lot. Then I reread it by myself without the audiobook. I write down all the words that I don't know. I translate them or I put them in context, let's say. Maybe some idioms or some phrases that I don't understand. I also kind of like Google them. And then uh, when I finish that two times, so basically when I finish this book uh, by listening with the audiobook and then the second time just by reading by myself and uh, writing down all the words, I'm going to read it once again, so the third time with audiobook again. And I really hope that this third time will be, uh, let's say, my best time with this book, uh, because so far I'm just struggling with the language, which of course doesn't bring me joy. Uh, it requires a lot of uh, attention, a lot of cognitive work, which is fine by me. I know what it is uh, to learn languages, you know, I'm prepared, but it's just, um, it just requires more time. So that is also the reason why I wasn't able to read a lot this month, uh, but that's fine. I don't have like any <laughs> complexes about that. Yeah, let's just continue.
continue with the books that I have actually finished last month. And I have to admit, they are all wonderful. So two of them you already know from my TBR uh, video, and two of them are actually kind of like a surprise. <laughs> I didn't expect to read them at all. It's just, I think I was so disappointed with Stephen King, so I decided to pick up uh, just, you know, the next, the next book, uh, let's say, of my shelf. Um, but yeah, let's begin with the one uh, that I mentioned in my previous video, and this is Dear Friend, From My Life, I Write to You in Your Life by Yi Yun Lee. So as you uh, maybe already know, this is the memoir by the uh, Chinese-American writer Yi Yun Lee, and uh, well, it is a very unusual memoir, I have to admit. First of all, she doesn't actually go chronologically like what she did like in the childhood and then, I don't know, in her teenage <laughs> years and then in her adulthood and etc, etc. No, there's no any typical biographical narration. I also sensed a little bit of auto theory in this book and by that I mean that she uh, was kind of like avoiding to talk only about herself. Uh, she didn't give us like facts and uh, stats. <laughs> she didn't like talk about her life, let's say, in a direct way. She was talking about her life through the lives of the authors and writers who influenced her. And that I found quite interesting. It was a very interesting approach. I would imagine this uh, happening, for example, in the book that is talking about how to write a book, like typical nonfiction, right? So we have this author and this author. But this is a very personal touch on how these people actually affected her. And um, I enjoyed it. I really liked it. I really liked that Yi Yun Li was not trying to fictionalize her life. Uh, rather, she was trying to reflect on her life and the events and people who were very important to her. So for that, uh, and I, sh I should emphasize, because when it comes to the book, um, the last book that I've read in June, I think this is very important and maybe we can actually compare the two. Uh, so yeah, don't forget about it, keep it in mind, keep this book in mind, because uh, I'll shortly take a break for a very nice read that I had this June, and it was Book Lovers by <laughs> Emily Henry. Uh, so this book was chosen for our book club and on that hot summer day we discussed uh, how the romance has evolved during the last uh, decades and it was a very interesting conversation because I think I'm not the only one who noticed that romance has developed something better, let's say, something more holistic and this is the case. I think um, Emily Henry has done a great job in um, bringing romance forward into, you know, 21st century. Am I a fan of romances after this book? Uh, no, <laughs> of course not. Um, I'm not gonna, let's say, continue read them constantly, like every month or something. No, that's, that's not my style, let's say. But just don't get me wrong, I have nothing against the romance. Um, I think this is an enjoyable read. It was so easy to read. It was actually, I couldn't actually put it down. And I actually think that this book is the reason why it kind of like brought me to books. It shaked me a little bit and said, okay, you can continue reading. It's enjoyable. It's enjoyable experience. And that is obviously true about my two following books. Anyways, thank you very much for this book uh, recommendation to my book club members. Um, I am uh, glad I read it. I'm glad that I encountered this author. I think uh, she's doing a great job. Uh, she entertaining a lot of people and I think that's wonderful, you know. Uh, so yeah, uh, it is great. Um, again, I'm not gonna read all her works. Uh, however, the last one, I think it's called Happy Place or something like that. Uh, so when we were discussing book lovers, uh, our book club member, she mentioned Happy Place and she said that it's actually not that happy of a book. <laughs> and that, and that brought my attention. Although I'm a little bit confused why they need this ridiculous book covers, which I mean, they are cute, they're very nice, but if you are aiming for like a serious literature, maybe you need to change a cover design because so far it gives me like young adults or something like a romance yeah beach read which is again completely fine a lot of people enjoy it and love it um uh, it's just um i'm i'm not sure about emily henry as the author if she ever wants to commit to like a serious research and serious work i guess what i mean by that if emily henry ever decides 
to let's say move towards the more psychological investigation into you know human condition or human relationship um as sally rooney for example does maybe she needs to reconsider also her styling and presentation which can be very difficult for the author if they haven't started that way so yeah but i wish all the best to emily henry i'm sure she knows what she's doing uh, the writing is very easy very nice um yeah i enjoyed that book it was very fun but that book i think it reminded me that i need to read something what is really important to me and i picked a book uh, again as part of my project uh, reading literature on war and war novels let's say uh, so i picked a farewell to arms by ernest hemingway so this was an unplanned read but since i was you know reading eric maria remark anyway i was thinking about this war and the presentation of war in the literature so obviously hemingway is the author that always you know comes up in this conversation but i have to admit that my encounter with hemingway wasn't always good so first of all i I read his Old Man and Sea. That was the first work that I've read when I was a teenager. Uh, it's just, I think it was my first time when I heard about what the Nobel Prize is. And I've heard that Ernest Hemingway uh, earned it for some reason. So I decided to uh, to read him. Then, of course, uh, the, <laughs> there was a funny story about uh, For Whom the Bell Tolls. Uh, I think that's the name. And uh, that book I didn't like. I didn't like at all. And I was very young, about like, I don't know, 20 years old or something, maybe less. No, I think it was like seven years old. I got the book, I read it, and I didn't enjoy it at all. Uh, I thought it was not fun, not entertaining. I think if I reread it now, I would understand it better. Maybe there was also a problem with translation. I don't know, because at that time I read it in Russian. Now, when I have the opportunity to read in English, I have to admit, I enjoyed every moment of the book. Um, like, I was also cautious about the fact that Hemingway might, you know, write a very bad female characters, but I was wrong in this case. I enjoyed the uh, main character, Catherine, of this book. Uh, I enjoyed the development of their relationship and um, obviously the ending is... Um, I'm not gonna spoil it if you, have, if you haven't read it, please do. I'm not going to talk about this book a lot in this video because I think I really want to make a compilation of the war novels uh, or books on the war and uh, talk about them uh, in like one video. So that's why I'll uh, stop at this point and I'll move to the superstar of the month. <laughs> and I'm talking about Yellow Face by Rebecca F. Kwong. So yeah, I think if you are into reading contemporary literature, you probably know this book or you've seen it. Uh, I have to admit, oh my god, the rain has started. That's actually quite nice because then uh, you have the background noise of uh, falling rain. That's sweet, isn't it? <laughs> Anyways, uh, yeah, let's talk yellow face. Um, this book was mentioned by my fellow book club member. Um, she recommended this book for the next month and uh, we decided to go with the uh, if we were willing to, with like this dark academia uh, work. However, I decided to pick that up for myself and read it by myself. And oh boy, now I a little bit, I regret a little bit that we didn't pick that for book club because I think there are a lot of stuff to discuss. Hi, this is Julia from the future, but obviously for you, I'll always be from the past. I was sitting here and editing the video and I realized how miserable I was for the last like 10 minutes of this video uh, because it was hot and stiff that night and honestly the rest of the video is just me uh, trying to talk about the book in the sauna. But I want to play it fair and I want to do the justice to the author of this book and I uh, want to make my point clear about this uh, work of literature. So my overall experience with The Yellow Face novel is very positive. I was glued to the pages all the time. I couldn't put it down. I 
I read it relatively fast um, in comparison to other books, uh, let's say. Uh, the language was accessible for me. The author raised very interesting moral questions that we in our modern society encounter um, well, I think more often nowadays. Uh, so be it, for example, the rapid colonization of media of all sorts and uh, philosophical development in understanding what the ethical behavior is, especially in the creative industries, um, and also the establishment of the copyright system. So some people see this book as a meta artwork or meta literary work uh, that goes beyond the pages of uh, its form and and that is for me quite interesting just as art sometimes requires the viewer or the listener the reader uh, this book doesn't exist without criticism once we begin to talk about this book and i think that is unavoidable we kind of repeat the content of this book. We unconsciously begin to compare the life of the uh, characters in this book with the life of the author, the actual author, Rebecca Guang, and her career. So there is nothing magical about it, and uh, it is very, I would say, common instrument in postmodernist uh, literature and postmodernist art. And um, it, the only thing, just with anything, it can either succeed or flop. So I remember, for example, in my hometown, where I am from, uh, there was an um, opera director who produced the opera uh, that was about the production of opera and in that opera they cancelled it uh, or let's say censored it and that actually happened in real life with the same production with the same opera, they censored it and, and cancelled it from the performances, from the stage. Um, so that is like a very typical example of meta artwork. Or for example, in visual art, I think the most famous example is this painting from the Belgian surrealist René Margritte, and this that is called Ceci n'est pas un pipe, or this is not a pipe, basically states the fact that what you're looking at is not the pipe, but rather the image of the pipe. So basically when we engaging in the conversation about this book uh, this way we actually contribute into meta quality of this book again there's nothing particularly new or innovative uh, about it but if you never had such experience in your life I would recommend actually to pick this book just for the sake of this meta experience let's say the second point I wanted to address is that uh, devoted followers of Rebecca Kwong um, actually started to interpret this work as semi-biographical. Honestly, I don't have opinion on that because I don't follow her career. I This is like the first book I read from her. But even if we agree that Athena, uh, the main or one of the main characters of this book, is based on Rebecca Kwong, again, there's nothing new about it in literary, let's say, history, because authors very often construct uh, their characters based on like real people or themselves even. I think the first example that comes up in my mind is uh, Leo Tolstoy and his Levin in Anna Karenina, which is uh, essentially it's him but in the book and he describes his own lifestyle and his, uh, let's say, um, view on life um, through the Levin character. So yeah, again, nothing wrong and nothing special about it. It's just, this is uh, how literature, you know, often works. But I do think that this book is more than just an exercise in lessons of great literature. I believe that Rebecca Kwong wanted to raise this very important and interesting philosophical questions of uh, ownership and who is the owner of the story. Whom do they belong when they published, for example? Are we allowed to fictionalize the stories of people who are not of the same nation or nationality? In this book, obviously, it is very uh, well combined with the problems of xenophobia Phobia, racism and colonialism but to me personal this book actually brought some of the insecurities that I have like who am I to write and research contemporary European art if I'm just you know a little half Asian girl from Siberia uh, so obviously the main character of the book doesn't have such reservations at all and this is book is not this book is not about imposter syndrome whatsoever but when the book brings you thoughts about your personal life when it gives you some you know uh, food for thoughts uh, about your perspective and your reality uh, that I 
think makes the book really good. The whole actual discussion and situation around like this right, who has the right for a real life event, it's a very interesting conversation, but it can take like the whole, the good one hour <laughs> of a video to discuss that. But just to conclude uh, about this book, I think it is a good one. And I think for full immersion, I would recommend to share this experience maybe with um, your friends or if you have a book club with the book club members because when you start to discuss that with the other people then it actually uh, submerges you into this meta experience which I find really cool and um, so yeah there's a lot to unpack there are a lot of different levels and different perspectives um, on this moral questions so yeah I find it very interesting it's really good and I uh, I appreciate that, uh, appreciate the work of uh, Rebecca Kwong. So that's it for this video. Thank you very much for being here and for watching my video. Uh, let's continue the discussion, if, uh, especially if you read the book. Let's continue that in the comment section down below. And uh, yeah, you will see me in the next video very, very soon, hopefully. <laughs> Goodbye.